Hi, this is Nam from Easy Sunday Club. And it's Kathy. And today we're gonna talk about paper. paper. Yeah. Specifically, what paper is the best paper to print? Watercolor art. Yes. So, how did this video come about? Uh, I've been asked quite a, quite often because I sell art print with my watercolor, what paper I use. Um, and it's a very complex question that can only be answered in the form of a YouTube video. <laughs> so next time when someone asks one of us, we can just link them to it. It's also something we spent a ton of time over the course of the last few years researching. So we're sharing our experience. It's, we don't know everything, but we've narrowed down the choices into three paper that we recommend for watercolor art. Yep. Reproduction. And uh, two call outs before we get into the paper. Uh, we buy all of our uh, water uh, matte fine art paper from uh, bhphoto.com. They're a company over in New York. Um, depending on how much you spend, you can get free shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, great site, very consistent, and that's who we use. Yep. Uh, second thing is that uh, for each paper, we're gonna give you the name, uh, the cost, and also do a quick comparison with your normal uh, eight and a half by 11 uh, staples piece of white paper that you would steal from your company office. Or at least I would steal from my company office. Yeah. They'll never watch this video, right? <laughs> yeah, they're not into this. They don't know about your side hustle making YouTube video tutorials on yeah. printing paper. And the reason why you want to do the paper flinging comparison with each type of paper yeah. is... Uh, mainly because I want to show you um, how this paper, the fine art, um, the fine art paper, is different from your normal average paper, and it's everything from the thickness to the color. There's different colors of white, and also to the texture. So all of those things um, affects the quality of your print. Mm -hmm. So the first paper that we want to talk about is the nicest one. This one's called Hot Press Bright, and it's by Epson. And this goes for $4.25 per page. So Kathy, by spending that much on a piece of paper, what are we getting? <laughs> You're getting the nicest color reproduction for watercolor art. Yeah. It's got a really cotton fibrous feel to it. It's 100% cotton. It's ultra white. So for my type of watercolor style where there's a lot of white space, the main subject really pop. And it's really nice to the touch. Like I mentioned, it's really thick. It's a 330 GSM, if that makes any sense to you. And uh, it's supposed to be archival, so it should last at least 50 years. Yeah. Although we haven't. And if I were to, I know you guys are out there, but um, the type of matte finish of the paper is that it's very smooth. There's no texture mm -hmm. to it whatsoever. Yeah, it's what you imagine cotton in a paper form would be. It's just ultra luxurious. So Kathy, how come we don't like this paper? The main reason is the cost. Yeah. It's super expensive for over $4 a sheet. And it's really inconvenient to use. For our printer, which is the Epson um, P800 printer, we have to manually feed each paper in from the bottom feeder, get it up there to the main feeder, and then it goes through the feeder again to print each sheet. Yeah. That takes about a total of anywhere between six to eight minutes per sheet, which for the price we're charging our prints at is just it's very not difficult. profitable. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's difficult to scale. It's difficult to scale, yeah. uh, let alone not profitable. Yeah, whereas if you just do an auto feeder, you can put in a stack of like 10 pieces of paper, or 20 pieces of paper, mm -hmm. file print, and it'll just print. <laughs> and you don't have to do any calibration mm -hmm. or, or maintenance for the most part. And because it's so expensive, every time we misprint something or if there's an ink smear, 
our hearts sink a little bit because <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like four dollars a page yeah flushing yeah money down the toilet yeah. and you no know, with printing there's always going to be defects and and issues like that so that's good for the, that's it for this paper i would say if you are printing true fine art like z clay quality paper uh, quality prints then i do recommend this paper this is just top of the line art fine art print but for our target market and the price that we are charging this is not the best choice for us yeah and when we were trying to get feedback from customers about the paper um, when they purchase the prints they're in um, cellophane wrap with a backboard um, we don't even know if the customers even notice the difference between um, the hot press bright paper and the other paper that yeah. we were using. So most consumers yeah. won't take it out of the yeah and the, sleeve to try to touch it. Yeah, and also the paper ends up going behind the frame anyway, so it's not like they are able to um, touch and experience the paper. So if we're just judging it by how it looks um, behind glass, then there are other uh, more cost-effective papers that you can use. Um, the last thing I want to do is just so you can know for comparison, this is a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, and this is a much thicker hot press bright paper, and that's kind of like how it moves and sounds uh, in comparison. So we don't use this paper for our print, uh, for our open edition prints, but we do print our limited edition prints on those because we're charging more. Yep. The second type of paper is the ink press watercolor rag and that paper costs about four dollars per uh, 17 by 22 sheet yeah my favorite thing about this paper is it the texture mimics the texture of a cold press watercolor paper the most and that's what i use to paint my original watercolor uh, we don't have an example of the printing paper but um, you can kind of imagine. Yeah, I think the main call out is, um, or something, uh, some features about the paper is that it is thick, like hot press bright, mm -hmm. but the finish is different. So hot right. press, the hot it means it's a smooth finish. For cold or cold press, that means that there's a texture to it. Yeah. And the texture is what replicates watercolor paper without the buckling that comes with watercolor paper. Right? Yeah, and yeah. it actually feels almost like a, canvas paper then it's it's got like a cloth feel to it than a just a straight up paper um of course it's hard to convey that idea um in video but like i said the cost is still high so that's something we didn't like so much we tried that paper for a while but ultimately the deal breaker is it is still very difficult to um to scale to scale yeah. yeah it still requires manual feeding because um, the paper texture causes a lot of friction when you're going through the auto feeder and um, and basically you're more prone to printing errors which take up a lot of time yeah um, the color effect I think was cool in that it mimicked a real watercolor painting yeah. but I would say that the hot press bright the colors pop more Yes. than the, um, the, the watercolor replica paper, right? And the reason is the ink press watercolor rag is not as ultra white uh, as it's not bleach white like the hot press bright is. Yeah. And um, just to do the paper comparison again, eight and a half by 11, very thin, right? And this is kind of like what the paper would be. It's like, it's just like um, watercolor paper. Almost, yeah, and the thickness thin. So now we're going to talk about the paper that we are using currently for our open edition art prints. This is also by Epson. It's the ultra premium presentation paper, matte. We only use matte for watercolor prints. And how much does this, this sheet cost? It's about a dollar per page. And they sell these packs in packs of 50. So in total it was about $46, $50 for yeah. BH photo. Yeah. So if you remember, earlier how much the uh, hot press bright cost this costs a fraction of the hot press bright one fourth <laughs> yeah and yeah. that's a lot <laughs> yeah and uh so um some things that we like about it is the quality is still good it's still a very white piece of paper 
So um, if you compare the seahorses. <laughs> so this was printed on the hot press bride paper, the expensive one. And this is printed on this ultra premium presentation. You can see the brightness is very similar. This one's a little thinner, but the color reproduction is, I would say, almost identical. Yeah. So if we were to, look, to think about why we really like it, first is the quality is there. It's very close, not very, very close, but it's very close to hot press bright for mm -hmm. most consumers, right? Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is that for our production workflow, it saves a ton of time because we can use the auto sheet feeder. So mm -hmm. I, um, when we have to print a bunch of prints for a uh, craft fair or for our retailers, um, it saves us so much time. Um, so it's lower maintenance. We can uh, actually send it to the printer, leave the room, watch an episode of Succession, <laughs> come back, and have 10 fresh prints waiting for us to cut. Yeah, um, and also it's an industry standard that we've observed. A lot of artists and a lot of artists that we look up to um, use ultra premium presentation math. So in trying not to recreate the wheel, we want to like follow in their footsteps and if it's good enough for some artists that we really respect and follow, um, it should be good enough for us. Um, what are some of the things we don't like too much about the paper. Having tried the hot press bright paper first, I would say oh, I can tell the difference in the quality yeah. of paper. Um, but ultimately what matters the most is you know, the color reproduction quality right, to the end consumer because they're not as knowledgeable as we are about the different types of fine art papers. And the, um, as long as it still looks good and it still goes nicely behind a frame, we feel like it was a worthy compromise just to stay in business profitably. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the, the, the biggest drawback is the quality because we started off with hot press bright and we eventually pivot, yeah. uh, pivoted to ultra premium. And uh, even for quality, yeah. it really just comes down to the thickness of the paper, which yeah. we thought is negligible because you know, most of these pieces do get framed. And we like the paper so much, we actually use them for our business cards. So um, when we print out a 17 by 22 piece of paper, we can print, uh, we can usually fit four eight by 10 prints on it. And in the margins, we will put the business cards in there so we don't waste any paper. The cool thing about these business cards is that they're kind of like mini prints because not only are they on the same paper that we print our prints on, they use the same ink and they come from the same Epson printer. So uh, that's like a cool thing to kind of sample to new customers or to retailers when you drop off um, a business card to say, hey, these are, the, like, these are just like the prints that we use. And when you feel it, you can kind of tell the difference. And we place on the back of each of our art print too for customers who want to keep in touch and find us online and all that good yeah. stuff. So we hope this video was helpful. Leave a comment if you have additional questions or want us to drill down into anything further. We will try to do a video. Actually, we will do another video just to talk about the printer and the different configurations we have for these papers. All right. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.